The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Great you. Jesus said to his disciples, I believe for certain that only thieves and robbers climb over the fence instead of going into the gate to the sheep pen. But the gatekeeper only the gatekeeper opens the gate for the shepherd, and he goes in through it. The sheep know their shepherd's voice. He calls each of them by name and leads them out. When he has let out all of the sheep, he walks in front of them, and they follow, because they know his voice. The sheep will not follow strangers. They don't recognize the stranger's voice, and they run away. This told the story. What he was talking about. Then Jesus said, I tell you for certain that I am the gate for the, for the sheep. Everyone who came before me was a thief or a robber, and the sheep did not listen to any of them. I am the gate. All who come through me will be saved. Through me, they will come and go and find pasture. A thief comes only to rob, kill, and destroy. I came so that everyone would have wolves and have it in its fullest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be Lord. to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, kids, as I said, it's great to be with you again. Haven't seen you in a long time, and you're all growing. That's great. You know, this gospel passage has always fascinated me because I really don't know anything about sheep or shepherds. I've never seen a shepherd. You know, the closest I ever came, maybe was going to Old Bethpage Village Restoration. Have you ever gone there? You know, to have, you know, some farms and whatnot. And I remember years ago going with my kids when they were small. And uh, we went towards one place and there were sheep, like in a pen, but one little one, a lamb, had snuck under the fence and was like starting to wander. So we kind of got around so it wouldn't get lost. And I told my daughter to alert somebody by the barn to come over. So I guess in a way, I was a shepherd that day, but I don't know. But what always fascinated me about this gospel is that it says that when sheep hear a voice that they know, the voice of the shepherd, they follow. If they hear a stranger's voice, they don't. Now, I don't know anything about sheep, but I know something about dogs. Any of you have dogs? You have a dog? Yep. Oh, all of you have dogs. That's great. So they know your voice, right? When you call your dog, does your dog come? Yeah. 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 Now, what if I were to call your dog? Your dog's never met me. If I were to call your dog, you think your dog would follow me? Yeah. Yeah, somebody's saying yes. Yeah, maybe you got a very friendly dog, right? That happens sometimes. Dogs aren't like sheep. They can be very friendly. But, I mean, if your dog is friendly as he or she may be, like if you were walking in one direction and I was walking the other, and we were each to call your dog, who do you think your dog would go to? You, right? Because your dog knows you. Your dog trusts you because your dog knows that you're the one that cares for him or her, feeds him or her, loves him or her, right? So Jesus gives us this analogy. He's saying that he is the good shepherd. And those that know him, meaning people who know his message, they know that he is a good shepherd, that he heals, he forgives, he loves, he teaches. They will follow him. Now, let me ask you this question. Have any of you ever actually heard Jesus is calling you? Anybody? No, me neither. Never once in my life that I hear Jesus say, hey, Frank, I'm calling you. But I have heard Jesus's voice in other ways. You know, I remember when, uh, when I was eight years old, and I had to have my tonsils taken out. Have any of you had your tonsils taken out? No. no. And Daryl has. There you go. Well, I don't remember being very good. I was eight years old, and I hadn't had the operation. I woke up. I'm in a hospital. And back then, to put you out for an operation, they used to use something called ether, so that when you woke up, you felt nauseous, you had a headache, you felt terrible. And there I was in the hospital bed all by myself, feeling this way. My throat hurt because my tonsils had been taken out. There were two other kids in the room, but they were sleeping. And I could hear other people. I could hear in the hallway, 
people talking and walking back and forth, but I was all alone and I didn't like that. Then all of a sudden, in all the noise I heard from the hallway, I heard footsteps from all the way down the hall. And I recognized those footsteps. Whose footsteps do you think I heard? Anybody want to guess? Mother's. Yeah? He's a doctor. No. Nope. Yeah. Your mom's? Yep. Absolutely, Ansley. I heard my mom's footsteps. There were a lot of footsteps in the hall, but her footsteps I knew. And the thing is, I knew that when she came into the room, she wasn't going to be able to heal me. She was a doctor or a nurse. She wasn't able, she wasn't going to be able to take away my pain or my discomfort. But just knowing and just hearing her footsteps, knowing that she was going to come into the room, made me feel better. I knew that she would be sitting next to me. She would kiss me, she would hold my hand. And even though I would still feel terrible, I would feel better because I was with a person who I knew loved me, would always take care of me. So I think that that's how we know Jesus, right? Through his goodness. But we don't hear his voice, but we hear him through other people in our lives. So let me ask you, through whom do you hear Jesus' voice calling you? Anyone? Yes, Ashley? My mom. Your mom? Anybody else? Yes, Aiden. My grandma. Your grandma. Anyone else? Yes, Aiden. To the priests and deacons. Priests and deacons, hopefully. Right. Now, we were talking about school a little bit. How about your teachers? You think so, sometimes? The thing is, we know we hear Jesus' voice when we hear from somebody who knows and loves us and cares for us. You know, because in the gospel, Jesus talks about those who tried, you know, those robbers and thieves, the ones that we shouldn't listen to, right? Could you think of anyone you shouldn't listen to? What about when you watch TV? What always interrupts a show when you're watching TV? Yeah. Commercial? Commercials. So there's a lot of people telling you how to live, what to believe, and they tell you, oh, you know, you got to wear this makeup or, you know, you got to you got to buy this uh, machine to build up your muscles. And because if you don't buy this makeup or build up your muscles, oh, then you're worthless. You know, you're not going to be cool. You know, you got to have this. You got to do that. But those people in the commercials, do they care about you? No. Do they love you? No. So those are voices that maybe Jesus is saying, those are the thieves and robbers, you know, they're trying to rob our attention. And those are the voices we shouldn't listen to. How about other people? How about celebrities, right? A lot of times you see actors, musicians, athletes, you know, and we're kind of in awe of these people because they have talents maybe we don't have. But a lot of times they're telling us how we should live, what we should believe in, what we should do, what we should not do. But do those actors and musicians and athletes pretty much, they care for us? You know, they might be nice people, but they don't know us. So again, maybe those are voices, the thieves and the robbers that try to sneak into our lives. And Jesus is saying, no, follow my voice. So basically we need to follow Jesus's voice when we know that we're being loved and cared for. And that doesn't mean that we hear with our ears, but we need to listen for Jesus's voice with what? <laughs> right there, what's that? Heart. Our, our hearts, that's right. To listen with our hearts. So that's something that's important to know, not only when you're young, but when you're old. Because, you know, a lot of times, I mean, I haven't had my tonsils out for a while, but a lot of times when I'm not feeling good, when things aren't going right, 
when I'm feeling all alone and I hear Jesus's voice, when I see all the people around me that are good and loving and kind. Amen. Hope I wasn't too long or boring. Okay. That was excellent. Thank you, Daryl. So why don't we just finish with uh, a prayer? All right. In the name of the Father and of the Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Lord, we give you thanks and praise for all that you give us, especially those who love us and care for us because through them we hear your voice. We ask that you bless each and every one of us. I ask that you bless each one of the children who have shared with me today because truly through you, I hear Jesus's voice as well. May God bless you today and every day. Amen. Amen. Have a great week. Thank you so much, Deacon Frank. And just before we we close this, uh, just want to go around and just to thank everybody, of course, to thank Deacon Frank and um, and everybody did such a great job. So just when um, when I say your name, just wave to the people. You got fans out there now because you're like TV stars. So uh, Michael was Jesus, right? And uh, Ainsley was one of the narrators. Right? And Aiden, uh, too, was one of the narrators. Excellent. And Vanessa and Jaslyn. And also Alexis was with us today, too. So it was great. So I got everybody, right? Did I miss anybody? No? You have to wave, Deacon Darrell. There you go. <laughs> um, so just thank everyone. <clears throat> this um, we'll try. We're going to be trying to do this each week. So <clears throat> if there's anyone watching this video that would like to be part of it, just have your parents send me an email at um, Deacon Darrell at St. Bridget dot net, and uh, we'll get you involved in the future. Okay. So God bless you all, and stay safe. Thank you.